really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard. Which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Last week we were talking with the stars of the moment, Sambasa, and then of course Salma Phillips, who is a film and a television producer from the North. And um, the conversation was really around film content. That's why I signed off last week, promising to be back here with Femi Utubemi. I've called the doo-doo of content. <laughs> and, but I'll take a break and I'll return on the show today. And don't forget the beauty about this show is that you can follow us on all our platforms and even follow me on Twitter and be part of this conversation as it's going on. So we'll be right back if you don't go away. Welcome to Seriously Speaking. Yes, welcome back. Femi, my, you're still my guru. <laughs> <laughs> Married to my guru. So you're still my guru. It's nice to have you on the show. Very nice. I can it's call you at short you. notice and you will be here. Well, you, you have, uh, Yoruba say you, you porter, you step on, <laughs> <laughs> on a wet floor. You've been a great friend. Thank but you. But I'm very glad and excited about what you're doing now, Battleground. It's like, after the work with all the documentary, it comes to documentary production, film production, you're there, we know what you can do. You've done Tinsel, you've done all sorts, you, you judge best movies, everything in the content area. And I'm like, there you are coming out with battleground. It's like you kept quiet and came back again. What happened? Well, I wasn't quiet. I was making, oh. I was making battleground. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, I, I love storytelling and, and the most dynamic creatives are storytellers. Um, so it doesn't really matter what the platform is. Mm -hmm. There are artists who create um, amazing stories on canvas. There are radio producers who are telling incredible stories. So it's all about storytelling. It's all about, you know, really wanting to entertain, to provoke, to make people think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But our stories are us. Our mm -hmm. stories are how we engage with our environment. Our stories are how we better understand each other, how we debate, how we um, reflect. And so I, I think there's so much in our stories um, as Nigerians that, you know, um, I'm, I'm really honored to be able to be to one be of those of, yeah. uh, storytellers provoking uh, our audiences. To, I mean, you've gone great well, like Mariga Boy, you. you know, all kinds of great, and because you tell me that a creative can go across all platforms. Yes. So you're comfortable zooming from film to documentary to series production, you know? But I mean, I, I think, you know, putting people into boxes is usually not good for the story. Um, there are some stories that lend themselves to be told uh, as a book. And there are some stories that translate very differently to cinema. Mm -hmm. um, those who read Half of a Yellow Sun and those who watched Half of a Yellow Sun Mm -hmm. understand that it's two different dimensions of the same story. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I think we are really privileged as storytellers, as directors, producers, and writers to be able to, um, to, to put our filter, mm -hmm. our perspective into how these stories are told. So I, I'm not really, I don't really care about what format it is. If I don't uh, really have a lot of money to make a film, I'll make it a documentary. <laughs> Oh, so that's what it is. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. I, I mean, we did some great work with River State, for example. Yes. I mean, I, I imagine yes. all the sunsets and all the things that she I shot. I really loved working with you. Uh -huh. I, I don't think enough people know that that's, this is not yeah. all you do. Absolutely. Um, we had a great time. And I think what was important also was that, you know, together we, we put ourselves to the test to be able to create a story mm -hmm. Um, about not just a government, but a people. Absolutely. And I think um, it's... Uh, a boy. I mean, I exactly. made intro to that thing. <laughs> anyway, this is just an aside. Now, I, do, I know you don't like talking about Nollywood, right? As Nollywood as we see it. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I'm doing this edition because I feel that um, content is something that people are not thinking about when they're producing or storytelling. It's not usually what's driving Nollywood as much as it should. And I'm worried about that. Well, I think there are, there are a few things that should worry us. Um, 
we're, we're succumbing already to trends. Mm -hmm. People are looking to retell a story that has done well in the theater, and then it becomes the way stories are told. Um, so we're making the same movie over and over again, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also this concept that there are only a type of actor that makes for a successful movie. And I, I find these things limiting because Nollywood has come a long way, quality-wise. It has come a long way because of technology. But it has also come a long way because we've constantly been curious, constantly experimenting, and we can't get here now and then start formularizing storytelling. What does that mean? I mean, well, you know, you now have guys who sit down and tell a, a, a young script writer that, you know, you, you must make another wedding party. Mm, for example? I mean, that, that's, for me, um, the fastest way to destroy a writer, mm -hmm. a creative. Um, if there was no wedding party before wedding party, it means that there is capacity for something else that would be as strong mm -hmm. and as funny and as winning as wedding party. There was uh, the Jamaican story before wedding Absolutely, party. Absolutely, yeah. And so there's just room to tell all kinds of stories. But for me especially, I think we need to begin to also get serious that storytelling is also about litigating our history. And that's what 76 did isn't, so isn't, beautifully. Isn't it, isn't it about uh, what people want to see? I think it breaks into two. If you only make movies trying to speculate about what people want to see, yeah. um, you'll be all over the place because people come in very various <laughs> modes. <laughs> so who are you talking to? I was so stunned. I mean, Giddy Blues did so well Absolutely. in Loring, for instance. I couldn't have imagined it because it's, a, it's an urban story. But the cinemas in Loring just kept filling up. We had to add dates in Loring. If you'd asked me before, I would have said impossible. Mm -hmm. It did so well in Cano. There was a riot because the projector went off. And I thought, you know, taking it to, to mm -hmm. Cano, given well, the kind of story. Isn't that a function of how hungry people are for stories they can connect to, or just for something to happen. I think we just need to respect the fact that the Nigerian audience is exposed already to everything. Internationally, I mean, they, they're watching all kinds of series, all kinds of stories. So the benchmarks are not Nigerian. Nollywood is no longer a Nigerian film industry. Nollywood is simply a film industry. Uh, we don't have Nigerian filmmakers. We have filmmakers who are Nigerians. And so we begin to, we need to begin to um, look at our benchmarks. It's a global world. Mm -hmm. The walls are down. If I make a, 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 a content today, my friends in India, my friends in America are watching it online. My Vimeo, there are people I don't know who go there and watch. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a global global um, creative community. Mm -hmm. And I think the concept of, you know, thinking that, you know, my goal is to be better than wedding party yes, is, I was just is, thinking is so that, I mean, silly mm -hmm. and so limiting. Um, you know, my sister used to well, love that it, phrase when they said every, a woman that wanted to be like a man has low ambitions. And, and that's the way <laughs> I think about, about it when we talk about, you know, mm -hmm. um, cinema and storytelling and looking for what we win rather than making a great story. I'm going to take a break so I can bring um, Eric Agimia to join us, who's uh, a producer and director of uh, Slow, Country, Slow Country, that's been making all kinds of waves. Beautiful right? work. Okay, so we'll be back with Eric joining us on set in a minute. Yes, welcome back. I'm going to invite Eric to join us on set. And Eric has only done two movies in his life, but I've been two mind-blowing movies. So it's really exciting to have you here, Eric. Come on, come on. I want you to walk in. I want you to be sure that you're walking in like a star. Go on, show me the star walk, starish. Okay, turn around. And I say, well, yeah, hey. You say, how do you respond to, well, yeah, hey? Oh, yes, hey. <laughs> it's nice to have you here. Uh, good to be here. And, uh, Welcome. You... Hello, sir. Uh -huh. it's good Hello, to see sir. You. Good to be here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you say it's someone that attends to detail. Yeah, you know. it feels as if I mean, that's the whole essence of storytelling. You have to be as I mean, Every area of it has to be perfect. I mean, there's you. You didn't go to the New York Film Academy. You are self-taught. 
more or less. Yeah, I'm self thought. I mean, you just have to read, read, and read until you're sure that you can do something. Then. So, but that's something to be said for being self taught, though, because he's produced two great movies, even though he didn't go to New York Film Academy, like some have to go. Why well, is this a good storyteller? And oh, pays, so that's the key. That, to me, is always the key. Um, a lot of people go to New York Academy to go and learn camera work. That's he knows <laughs> storytelling. Yeah. Oh, that's the difference. That's different. Okay, but you know, I, what I find interesting is you've picked themes that ordinarily people, I'm not going to walk into, I'm not going to say, okay, this movie is treating uh, rape and I want to see it, you know, or treating a pimping and I want to see it. But you did it without any fear or favor. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's just what you feel. It, it, as an artist, sometimes you just want to express something. You get it. So I think that was what I, that story I wanted to tell at that point. So um, what inspired it? Slow Country, that is. Uh, slow Country, basically, I think it's about... Some people say I'm feminist, but I'm not. <laughs> I don't think I am. You must but... love your mom. That's the way I see it. <laughs> I love my mom, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love my sisters because uh, practically my sisters raised me. You know, oh. like, they were still young. We were maybe two years ago, three years yeah. ago, but... They raised me, I mean, they used to bathe us, feed us, so like that. So I have soft spot for, for women. So I hate to see women suffer. I hate to see women go through some tough times. For example, you see women on the roadside with their kids and selling under the sun, things you can't do even as a man. So it breaks my heart. So I, I think um, that must have inspired us to the country. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Right people have to go and see. I would have said it has a happy ending, but I'm yeah. not sure. But you know, people have to go and see yeah, it. Yeah, it has a happy ending. I'm a happy person, so it must have a happy ending. <laughs> it must have. So, I mean, were you were you thinking about? Um, I did ask you earlier if making money was important or making movies. Which one is more important? When you're thinking of content. Um, well, I don't know. I can't speak for myself. Yeah. Because when I was coming to filmmaking, I didn't think about making money or being famous or anything. I, so but you didn't study films. So what you studied engineering? No, I said and science lab tech. Science lab tech. That's a science student. And <laughs> yeah. when you were going to school, were you thinking, I can't wait to get behind the camera and do what I gotta do? Yeah, you know, like I think it has to do with the environment I grew up. You know, like you have to be one professional. You read one professional called like mensing or accounting or mm -hmm. you know law or something like that. So I think I went the wrong way. <laughs> Don't let your, your parents have paid your fees. Yeah, you know, my parents, you know, you just, I grew up with my dad, you know, broken home now, you know, I grew up more with my dad too. And my dad gives me money, go to school. I mean, whether you really going to school, because I was always traveling, just walking. <laughs> was that the inspiration for your mile, your mile? Your mile from home. Uh -huh. that, wasn't, oh, okay. that wasn't the inspiration. Your uh -huh. mile from home was basically, you know, like, um, I knew what would work and what would work. So when, when I wanted to make, Slow Country would have been the first film actually, but the budget I had then. Hey, now you're talking money. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was because not. Because Amanda <laughs> talks about how you crowd all of them into one little <laughs> tight bus, and you are going to shoot in some kind of way out locations. So money was an issue. It's always an issue in film, you know. So, but you know, you are, you are, you are recreating people's life. You get so it's it's tough. It's a tough thing to recreate situation, recreate a world. That's why they call it a world. So it's it's a tough thing to do. Money is always the problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how you manage the resources you have to achieve what you want. You know, it's is what really matters. Before so, I bring our stars on set to come and ask you some questions, I I do know though that the bank of industry, for example, is trying to make money available. But it seems like a lot of artists are not taking advantage of that. Uh, bros, or what do you want to say? <laughs> Let's start with you, bros, to comment on that because money is an issue. Well, it is an issue, um, but I also think that, you know, the process of, of getting access to that money um, perhaps needs to be simplified. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's also important that uh, the, the story that is being funded mm -hmm. has capacity to bring back some money, mm -hmm. uh, because the idea is it's a, it's a springboard Board, yeah. for the filmmaker. The filmmaker should be able to make enough money to then begin to make to films back. regularly mm -hmm. and pay back. So... Um, but I, I think a lot of filmmakers, young filmmakers, need to also understand that it takes courage for people like Eric to determinately push forward. Mm -hmm. It takes courage, it takes passion, um, and it, it takes a lot of hard work and sacrifice. That's true. You agree with the courage thing, right? <laughs> totally. It's courage. <laughs> it's just courage. Because starting is always tough. It's hard because it's like going to a dark space. You can't see anything, but you just want to take that dive. You know, so courage. So I want to take a break. I'll take a break now. I'll return with my final moments with my guests. And when I get back, those two, we sit down in my living room and listen to what we have to say as we run up the show. We'll be back. 
Well, the sad thing about this show is our content is so much and time is so short. But however, I have big minds here and I'm not going to end without them telling me a thing or two about what you should be taking home today. And Salma has a question or so. The way I'm going to, let's start with Salma's question. Let's start with your question. My question is for Uncle Femi. Femi. <laughs> Femi, the, um, dudu, the dudu of filmmaking. Yes, the dudu of filmmaking. Dudu. My question is, I ha I, okay, at a point I had to train for um, TV presenting and producing a talk show. And what I'm trying to do now is go into filmmaking and I want to produce my own series. Do I need to train for that? Well, you do need to understand the process. Um, the good thing is the, what, what uh, motivations, passions you've uh, used to be successful in your current show mm -hmm. are the same tool sets you need to get going with doing the series. Mm -hmm. Pay more attention to storytelling. Prepare your stories beforehand. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you know, your characterizations are right and cast the proper way. Remember, television in series means people are following the story yes. every week. And, and oh, every day as a duet for battleground. Every day for battleground. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I have absolutely no doubt that you, keep you, talking you about know process. what it takes. You know, <laughs> yes, but underneath you. all of that, still remains storytelling, right, uh, Eric? Yeah. Because it's storytelling that is moving you. But in telling stories, do you have specific actors in mind, for example? I just wonder. Yeah, I think first of all, the story has to be right, and um, your characters has to be because when you create a story, you create characters. When you create characters. Whatever you do, whatever decision you make, is all about those characters. So mm -hmm. it has to favor them. The person you are casting for those roles has to be right for that, okay. for those roles. Okay, Otherwise, okay. yes. You yes. just be struggling. I mean, they just be struggling to give. Because you can't give what you don't have. That's the truth. And I want to thank all of you for coming. I don't know how I managed to talk to five people in one show. I'm talk talk. <laughs> so thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well done on Slow Country. Battleground. Yeah. Please write me in the next season. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll see you all. Thank all you very much. Thank you. Thank you.